Alan, let's see what's going to be relegated and what's going to be promoted in the review section. First up, it's rock and roll racing. A one or two player intergalactic hot rod derby set over 37 blistering racetracks. Select your car, put your pedal to the metal and blow away the opposition. It's really fast, it's really brilliant to look at and the sound is fantastic. Loads of 70s rock anthems all beefed up for the Super NES. The feel of the game is very much like Super Off-Road Racer. It's great fun and uh, you, you really enjoy throwing the cart around the track. Great thing about rock and roll racing is where you can blow other competitors off the track. You can spike them, you can bomb them, you can blow them away with all kinds of missiles and guns. I can guarantee you'll be stuck to the screen for many hours. It's really very addictive. Next up, it's Thunderhawk. 48 separate missions of mega CD chopper action. Fight the enemy in jungles and over frozen wastelands. But if you're not careful, you could end up in a body bag. It's got gorgeous 3D graphics. Gameplay's simple. Destroy all the enemy, destroy their buildings, destroy their missile installations. It's really fast, it's really fun, and it's furious. It's hard to differentiate between the targets and the backdrops. But there's great sound, there's great graphics, and as you get more concerned with the mission directives, you really get absorbed into the game. It becomes very addictive. <laughs> In Haunting, use your ghostly powers as Poltergeist to take possession of over 400 household appliances. Then you have to use these to spook your money-grabbing relatives out of your house. It's really great being a Poltergeist. You get to scare the family, you get to see them jump out their skins, you get to jump out of the loo, what more could you want? In terms of lasting appeal, it may be a little repetitive. It's a nice game, it's very original, but really, at the end of the day, the only thing that's really frightening is it's a very high price tag. Brilliant. Nice little game, nice little touches. And, uh, I'd say value for money. Don't listen to the rest of them. Imagine this. You're late for class and you've still got all that homework to do. Time's running short and if you don't get it done, you know you're in big trouble. Nothing's going right. And worst of all, you've forgotten your mum's birthday. What a nightmare! Never fear, because here's something that may stop you losing any more sleep. The Newton message pad from Apple. With built-in time zones, calculator, add-on encyclopedias and loads of other features, it does more than just remind you about your homework. Got some diagrams to do and no ruler? No problem. Just grab the pen, do them rough and Newton tidies them up for you. When you're done, just plug your Newton into the printer and out it comes. If you're not happy with anything, just scribble it out and start again. If you need to make notes, no matter how bad your squiggle is, Newton's designed to recognise your scrawl and convert it into beautifully typed text. Stuck on something? Why not call a mate? Just tell Newton who you want to call and it'll find you the number. It won't stop there though. Just hold it up against the phone and it'll even send the dial tone down the wire and call your mate for you. When you're done, use the special wastebasket feature to let you clear up the screen and get started on the next job on your busy schedule. If you think that's clever, how about sending an electronic signal to your mate? Using the special beam function, you can pass written messages between Newtons without even having to connect them. Just write down your problem and beam it over. Cheat on as many exam questions as you like and pass as many messages over as you like. One word of warning though, if you're gonna use it, don't get caught. Some golden nuggets of information beam down there for you in the reviews.